This is a Victor Series 600 adding machine, first made in the 1940s. It's the Victor Champion. It has a full keyboard with six columns of input, allowing seven digits in the answer. It has a classy Art Deco style with a black plastic case. It's a real cute ridge here in the middle. It has a crank with a plastic handle, a lever for totaling and subtotaling, and a repeat switch that's missing its top. There's no display. The only way to see the answer is the printer. This machine is functionally pretty much the same as the older Victor machine that I talked about in my first video. Actually, this one and that one have exactly the same features. The only difference in functions is that the older one had a non-add button, and this one doesn't, and the older one had a display on it. The basic functionality is adding. Each column here is a digit. To type in the number 532, you hit 5 here, 3 here, 2 here. Then to add, you pull the crank and type in another number, and another if you like. So this here looks like this. Each time you pull the crank, it prints the number you typed. And to get the total and clear it to zero, you hold the total button down towards you while you pull the crank. The Victor Series 600 was designed specifically to do all the same stuff that the other machines did, but be smaller and cheaper. And it was. It only weighs about 10 pounds, and it's pretty small. Here it is next to a hardcover book. Actually, that book happens to be It All Adds Up, a book written by and about the Victor Corporation in 1968. My university library bought this book in 1969, shortly after it was published, and I checked it out in 2017. You want to know how many other people have checked out this book in the intervening 50 years? Anyway, this book does have a little info about the creation of the 600 series. The goal was for it to be small and cheap. The internals were completely redesigned so that it used far fewer parts than usual and it sold for $55 compared to the Burroughs machines which were always more than 100 Victor's sales increased by 301%. Actually, the book says, sales soared a phenomenal 301%. Does that mean that sales had multiplied by three times, like the end result was three times what they started with? Or does it mean the sales increased by three times, like the total sales at the end was four times what they started with? No wonder nobody reads this book. Anyway, this thing was cheap, and lots of people loved it. It says Champion on it, but that's a little mysterious. The book has a picture of the 600 series and a 700 next to it, but they don't say Champion. You can find this machine both ways. Sometimes it says Champion, sometimes it doesn't. And the 700 also sometimes says Champion on it. And there are machines that say Champion that look totally different. Don't get me started on the Victor Champion Shuttlecock, made with grade A duck feathers. Or this guy, Victor Brochon Champion. And this book doesn't say anything about a machine called Champion. Here's the index. Caterpillar, Cheese Man, see, no Champion. So this word Champion isn't really the name of the model. Maybe it was just some kind of branding that they put on all their machines for a while. Check out the bottom of the machine. You can see a unique serial number stamped down here. We've got a Victor stamp up here and a little button on each side over here. These things actually slide back and then the plastic case pops off. You have to remove the crank, which just pulls out. I always like it when you can open the thing without a screwdriver. You don't even need to remove the paper. It looks pretty good inside, though most of the mechanism is buried under the keyboard. You can take this plate off, but there's still not too much to see. This part here has the serial number stamped on it again. Anyway, it's a really great machine. It's not breaking any ground in calculating features, so the only thing that made it worth buying was the design. You can really tell that this is a late generation machine. Everything is perfectly in its place and it all feels good. The only thing I don't like about the design is that the totaling the machine requires both hands. You hold the total button here and then you crank at the same time. At the very least, I'd like the total button to be on the left, then I wouldn't have to reach over across the machine. They could have just swapped the total and the repeat switch. But why you make me use both hands at once? Maybe since totaling resets the amount to zero. They want to make it hard to do by accident. It still seems clunky. 
though this two-handed totaling was basically universal across all machines like this. They don't want to get too crazy now. Hey, I did that whole video without making a big deal out of Cheese Man. Mm -hmm.